today is Wednesday, November 25th, and I am back for my stitching update. It has been two weeks since my last one, so I hope you have all been well and you've been stitching and creating all of the things. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. This is a video podcast about cross-stitching and sometimes quilting. However, if you are not interested in seeing the quilts, I will show those in the second half of the video if I have them to show, and I will let you know in plenty of time that they will be making an appearance so that that way you can go on to the next FlossTube video. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. I hope you've had a great two weeks since we last sat down to chat. So... You have no idea how many times I've done my intro. <laughs> I've been interrupted three times by the mail, the FedEx, and the UPS. It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> anyway, so it's normally I do my videos on Friday. However, I ended up deciding to record the video today, which is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. However, by the time you hopefully see this, it will be the Saturday after Thanksgiving. A couple of the reasons why I decided to film a few days ahead of time is because one, I have to learn a new uh, video editing platform and I want to give myself plenty of time to do that. And also the day after Thanksgiving, which is Friday, I decorate for Christmas and it's kind of a tradition and, and so it just, it made more sense to record today. So I'm kind of squeezing my video in between. Um, it's, it's about 1.45 here in my neck of the woods. I have a little while before I have to leave to run an errand. So it's the perfect time to sit down and show you what I've been working on, some mail that I got, as well as some finishes that I picked up. So hopefully you won't mind that this video is not a long video. I know a lot of you guys love it when I do a long video, but today it just, it's not going to work out um, to do, you know, for instance, I'm not going to be able to show quilts, um, but I will show it next time. So let's get started. A little life update. Um, Allison has moved out of the dorms and so now she is home because uh, winter term, they're doing it all online. And uh, kind of the, I don't know, the rumor mill is that um, spring term is also going to be all online as well. So she decided to let her room go and she went and she picked up what was in her dorm room yesterday. And so, yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Um, I really was hoping that, you know, life would kind of return to normal and that campus would open up so that, you know, college life you know she she went off to college expecting to have all of these great memories and meet all these wonderful people and uh yeah this year has just been such a bummer for her so she has really only experienced ca uh, campus life um last year uh when or fall and winter and other than that it's been all online since then so i'm really hoping that life does return to normal at some point and that she's able to go to school and experience college over the past couple of weeks, I got a little bit of happy mail. And the first package that I received was from Alice and she sent me this amazing card, which I keep seeing this particular sampler pop up all over the place on Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. And so this chart is Elizabeth Ufendel, 1829 by Hands Across the Sea Samplers. And it's been out for a while, um, you know, because I do remember seeing it at other times, but for some reason over the past month, this chart here keeps like calling to me. And I think I might have to add it to my wish list because there's no way, even if let's say I caved and I bought it, there's absolutely no way I would be able to even begin thinking about stitching it until 2025. <laughs> based on everything that I've been kidding up. So, but she sent me this amazing card and then she included some charts that she was passing along to me. And so the first one is Lizzie Kate, Fall Fantastic. So I have been kind of on the hunt for um, little charts that I can stitch for my, um, the two uh, trees that I keep seasonally decorated, as well as my sad little trench bowl right there with just the one little finish in it right now. Um, the second one is Prairie Schooler Winter Samplers, which I love this one so much. It is so beautiful. 
and I think that this one right here I'm going to have to seriously consider stitching very soon. The next one is the Prairie Schooler Friends, which I've never seen this one. I've never seen the other the other one either, but I love this. And this one right here reminds me of something that my grandma probably would have stitched. It just, it looks so much like her. Uh, the next one is Act Justly by La Di Da. I've never seen this one either, but I think this one would stitch up pretty quick. Um, the Prairie Schooler Christmas Village, which this one has been on my wish list forever. And I know that this one's going to make it into my rotation next year. I love it. Um, this one is called It's Autumn by Sue Hillis Designs. And I love it. Love it. It even came with the charms. This one is Pilgrim Pie by Shepherd's Bush. This one would be so perfect for Thanksgiving. And that's what I need. I need more Thanksgiving stitches or to get more Thanksgiving stuff stitched for my decor because I only have, uh, there's one across the room that was a freebie I did. Um, and then my trench bowl over here, what you see in the tree. And I also have cinnamon stars, which you can barely see the top of it right there. Um, this is Ghosty Boo by, I did not look. Twisted Threads. I love this one, it's so cute. I mean, how cute is that little ghost? So cute. Um, Pumpkins Galore by Heart and Hand. And these ones I could easily break up and do as four little ornaments. Perfect, perfect. Uh, Sunflower Harvest by The Needle Love Company. Perfect for my seasonal sunflower tree that I put out in August. And Eleanor Rigby by Blackbird Designs. So thank you so much, Alice. It was so gen generous of you to share those with me. And then the other package that I got was from Cindy Fuller. And this is the card she sent. And I loved her sweet note. And I think that her husband and my husband are like very distant, distant, distant cousins on the Fuller side. Very distant. But how fun is that? That, you know, through, you know, floss tube and me doing my anniversaries of the heart and, you know, talking about how, you know, Brian's family, the Fullers came over on the Mayflower. And um, so it's so fun when, you know, people watch my videos and then they hear me talk about it and then they'll send me messages letting me know that, oh, I'm also related to that same person through, you know, one of the kids. And it's just really neat to, you know, we're all extremely distantly related to each other, but it's so fun that, you know, so many of you guys are like, hey, I'm also related to so-and-so, and it's just a lot of fun. So she sent me a fat quarter of her um, favorite reproduction fabric. Isn't this green fabulous? And when I saw it, I immediately thought, I have to find something like Christmassy to, you know, put this in. It's just the perfect shade of green. Um, and she also sent me, um, let's see, this is a shaker sampling by Margaret and Margaret. Look at all those fabulous samplers. Oh, so much fun. This is God Bless America by, I think it's Singrid Designs. Love it. Love, love, love it. This is uh, quilts in a day or two. It's all quilt, um, uh, motif cross stitch and these would be perfect also to just do um, seasonally for the tree because I'm always looking for anything that I can make for my seasonal trees because I've only really been I think it's been three or four years now since I decided to keep a tree up year round and so I've been you know slowly collecting the ornaments and some seasons are more decorated than others and so a lot of these would be perfect this is John and Abigail by Plum Street Samplers. And I've had this one on my wish list for a long time as well. Love it. Uh, this is the Prairie Schooler St. Nicholas. Love it. I have a Santa tree. In fact, this tree uh, in a couple more days becomes the Santa tree. So these would be perfect. So perfect. And then she sent me some magazines. Uh, these are the Sampler and Antique Needlework Quarterly. 
and I have had the best time flipping through all of these. I was way late to the party um, on, you know, because I, even though I, I learned how to cross stitch when I was like 11 or 12, and then I kind of dabbled in it through my teenage years, um, after I got married, you know, I made a couple of things and then I kind of gave it up because I had no idea this wonderful world of cross stitch existed beyond dimensions kits. So had I known these magazines existed when they did, I definitely would have su subscribed to them for sure. I love that so much. Love it so much. And I have been looking because, you know, I've been working on Brian's stocking and both of my kids have stockings that my grandma made them. And so I need to make myself a stocking. And when I saw this, I thought, how perfect is that, that I have been searching for a stocking? And then this one comes in the mail. Uh, the next one is this one here. And this one, which who doesn't love an awesome sampler with a beautiful house on it? And this one. So thank you so much, Cindy, how much you guys, you spoil me rotten. Just thank you, thank you so much. So before I show you what I've been working on, I thought I would show you two previous finishes and two brand new finishes that, um, well, the two uh, brand new finishes are ones that I picked up from Acorns and Threads over the past two weeks. And then these other two I've had done for probably four years, four or five years now. The first one, was a freebie from the Primitive Hair, and it is called Give Thanks. Um, I believe it's on her blog, and I will do my best to provide a link to it down below in the description. I did this, I want to say maybe on a 28 count linen. It was one of the very first projects that I worked on on linen, and I did it with all DMC. And I'm guessing I probably charted the DMC myself. I couldn't find any, a lot of the time when I stitch something and if I, you know, change anything, I try to save it just in case I ever need to go back and look and see what it is that I use. But unfortunately I could not find the, the piece of paper that I would have kept. You know, usually I'll, I'll print it out and then, you know, it'll give you uh, what you're supposed to use as far as threads and I usually will, you know, I'm usually, I used, I don't want to say that I used to be really good about it, but I, I used to keep track of all of that and then I quit, but I remember working on this one and I remember writing it down on the piece of paper, but I didn't keep it. So all I know is I use DMC and chances are I would have just went into the box and I would, I would have looked at, at her picture and then I would have just pulled DMC. So. I also finished it myself. It's not perfect. And one of these days I plan on redoing it. The other previous finish is uh, this little turkey. This is called Bok Bok. It was also a freebie that I found um, somewhere on the internet. I don't know if it was someone's blog or, or what it was from, but I do remember it was a freebie. I tried to look for it and I couldn't find it, but um, I will look when I get this video edited and as it's, you know, processing and doing its thing, I will try and look again and see if I can't locate it. But I do know it was a freebie. Um, I did stitch it with all DMC and I finished it myself. I just kind of kept it really simple and eventually I will probably make it into a little pillow or, or something. But the, um, the pumpkin frame, stand clipboard thing came from Kohl's years ago. I got it the day after Christmas and it was like 99 cents. Eventually I also plan to redo the bow, but for now it works. And then I'm so excited. Um, so Acorns and Threads called last Tuesday and they told me that two of the pieces that I had dropped off at the end of September were finished and ready to be picked up. So we went up there on Friday, Thursday or Friday of last week, and I picked up Baby It's Cold Outside. This is by Heartstring Samplery. I started this one 
in December, and then I set it aside, and then um, there was a big stitch along that happened after Leanne from Lost and Floss passed away, and I picked it up again and started working on it in memory of her. I added her initial right here in this snowflake, and I absolutely love it, and every time I see it, I will always think of her and... Even though we never met in person, you know, there was always that hope that we would, but she was always so sweet and she was always so, so supportive and she always said the nicest things anytime I posted anything and she was just so sweet. And so every time I see this, I will remember her. And then I also picked up Thanksgiving Comes Again by the Prairie Schooler. So I started working on this one last year at the retreat fall fling that acorns and threads put on i think it was the first weekend in november i started up here with the pumpkin and i get this question a lot anytime i show this piece um because the original chart has a cornucopia up here and i decided to switch it out for a pumpkin because i like pumpkins uh, so that's all I did. And if you have the Thanksgiving Comes Again chart, it's one of the four, you know, they always have, you know, they always have the long piece and then there's um, a little square that they'll put in there that'll have four um, other motifs. And I think in this particular one, it was a pumpkin, the cornucopia. I think there was a turkey and I forget what the other one was. And I decided to put a tur or put a pumpkin in here because I already had the turkey, I already had the cornucopia. And um, that way, anytime I looked at it, I would remember that I started stitching this at Fall Fling last year. So I was not expecting to get it back before Thanksgiving. So I'm so happy that, you know, it's back and I'm able to have it up for Thanksgiving even though technically by the time you see this, Thanksgiving will be over, but I'm so happy that I had this up and got to enjoy it for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Okie dokie. So I got all the stuff that I have been working on over the past two weeks. A few of the things, like in uh, the instance of Olga stocking, I've actually only worked on it one day over my two week rotation. Tonight I will be working on her. So she's one of the things that I would have had an extra day of progress on if I had done my video on Friday, which I just realized that if I absolutely hate the way this video is going, I can just redo it on Friday. So I'm like, huh, well, now that I think about that, huh, I feel a little bit better. <laughs> so first one is Olga Stocking. This is by Plum Street Sampler. Um, and I am working on this one with my good friend Yvette, which I had the opportunity to do a FaceTime with well, is it a FaceTime or is it in the, is it FaceTime? No, it's not FaceTime. It's the one that you do through Facebook. Is that FaceTime? Anyway, so I had the opportunity to do one of those video chats with Carol and Yvette on Sunday, and it was so fun to catch up with both of them. But here is my progress on Olga's stocking. Let me get this way and lock the tree. So here's my progress. So I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count vintage pearl barley with all of the called for everything and I love it working on this has been so much fun and it's going along pretty quick actually um, all I have left to finish is the birds and there's a few leaves above the house and then we'll drop down and begin working on the motifs that are down below the house there's a moon, Olga herself, and then the first pumpkin, or the first large pumpkin. So I, yeah, I'm loving this so much. I love that house, it's so beautiful. And I love working on this linen. It's just, it's like butter. It's just so, it's so nice to the touch. It's just, it's so wonderful to work on. So I am working on this bird here. So I just have, there's a couple of leaves and there's, uh, looks like there's, nope, I did that one. There's some motifs over here. So that's all I have left to do on the upper portion of her stocking and then drop down and begin working all in here. So 
It's been so much fun to work on. I'm so glad that we um, started working on it. So I think as of now, we started it on September 28th. So we have been working on Olga for eight Wednesdays. I think that seems about right. Or this will be the eighth Wednesday, I think. Um, so it's been so much fun. Basically two months is, is what we've been working on. And we've already started talking about um, what we're going to start together once Olga's stocking is finished. So that's a lot of fun. Um, anyway, but I'm having a, a wonderful time working on it. I look forward to it every Wednesday. And I'm excited that I get to work on her again tonight. And here is, before I forget, here are all of the threads that I am using. I'm pretty sure these are all of the called for. I don't think I substituted anything. So I love it. This is the little fob that Yvette made us. So I love it so much. I know I probably say that about all of the projects that I'm working on, but I really do enjoy everything that I'm stitching. It just, it makes, it makes working on all of these projects so much fun when you are working on something that you just absolutely enjoy. And all of these projects I just, I love working on. Next up is Feast of Friendship by Blackbird Designs. So this is a stitch along. And once again, I can't remember how the hashtag wording goes. So I will scroll it across the bottom. But it is a stitch along that is hosted by Christy from Crosshatch Quilts and Lori Holt of BMI Bonnet. They started out as a stitch along amongst themselves to celebrate their friendship and then more and more of us decided that we loved what they were working on and they um, encouraged us to join. So it's been so much fun working on and here is my progress. So do you remember in my last video I talked a little bit about how I had had a lot of counting errors and I had to end up ripping out large sections of anniversaries of the heart, Brian's stocking, and the pumpkin hollow that I was working on. I thought that Feast of Friendship was one that managed to not have that issue. But upon picking it up uh, this last week, I started Let's see, I started working on this Thursday and Friday of last week. So I picked it up on Thursday, started stitching, and discovered that somewhere I had made a mistake because I was working on this border here. And I, I started over here, started stitching, stitching, got all the way up here, and immediately noticed that if I kept going, I would hit the bottom of the pedestal. And I thought how, you know, of course, I said some sentence enhancers. So I started looking, thinking that maybe my bowl, I had brought it down too far, or maybe I had miscounted the pedestal, but everything looked right. I um, kind of was looking up in here, you know, making sure. And then I got all the way down here and discovered that I had miscounted. So by my miscount there, I threw off this whole thing. So I had to go in, I, I wasn't that far into it. And um, so I went ahead and I just ripped it all out and I restarted. So that is my progress from Thursday and Friday of last week. This one, um, I probably won't work on it again until after my anniversary's block is finished. Um, so that's one that's just kind of kind of rotate in and out of my rotation as I, you know, for instance, finish the anniversaries block, then I'll pick it up and I'll work on it for a few days, give myself some time off from anniversaries and then set it aside and, and work on my anniversaries block. Um, and then once I get that done, then I'll, I'll work on that until it's finished. This is the colors that I am using. So I am using um, some of the called for and some that I have um, converted. And all I did was, you know, look at what was called for and then, you know, tried to find something that was in my stash that was, you know, similar. So I love all of those beautiful colors. Originally, I thought maybe there was the possibility that I could get it done before Thanksgiving, but no. 
So I will, um, like I said, once I get my anniversaries done, you know, I'll begin focusing on that and then try to get, I would like to get it done before the end of the year if it's possible, but I'm not going to hold myself to that just because, you know, I've been holding myself to getting my anniversaries done and Brian stocking and, but it would just, it would be nice. It'd be a nice little bonus to have that one finished and then be able to start the new year fresh with brand new projects. That being said, next up is Elizabeth Jane by Blackbird Designs. This is block number 12 in the Anniversaries of the Heart series. And this one I'm stitching for my parents. And my parents are divorced and they have been divorced for over 20 years now. And I wasn't sure if I was even going to put them in here because in real life they hate each other. With a passion. <laughs> so I picked up my anniversaries on Monday and this is, it's getting so big now, it's getting hard to kind of fit it all in, but here is, hang on a second, here is my progress. So the border went pretty well. I got, um, I worked on it the first night and then I was kind of getting, not necessarily burnt out, but I wanted to at least begin stitching on the house. So I got a little bit of the house started and then I finished it last night. I saw the husband pull into the driveway, but he must, he knows I'm doing my video. And so he's, I looked out to see why I hadn't seen him, you know, or why I hadn't saw him walk across towards the front door and he must be reading something in the car. So I'll just keep going. Um, and I also realized that when I paused the video, I forgot to tell you that I stitched Feast of Friendship, or I'm stitching Feast of Friendship on a piece of 36 count heritage by Picture This Plus, I think. If I make a mistake about that, the corrected information will be down in the description box. In fact, everything that I stitch, all of that information, I always put that down in the description box. So if I make any mistakes, if I give the wrong count or the wrong, you know, any information, the corrected information is always in the description box. So that being said, let's continue. So here is the progress so far on block number 12. Um, I will be stitching, so tonight I'm gonna work on Olga stocking and then Thursday and Friday, I will be working on this again. It doesn't seem, I don't really think this block is going to take a whole lot of time um, because the two houses, they're not really that big. So I'm hoping that this one will go a lot quicker than the previous one. Of course, the previous one, I had all sorts of trouble with it and it took three days longer than it should have. So, but uh, this, I don't, yeah, I don't think it's gonna take that long. And, and I know I did mention this in my last video. So I'm going to put my mom's name down here and my dad's name up here and then so in this block here, where you see Gust, which is my married name. So this is um, E. Walden Pearls. This is my husband's paternal grandparents. Because Gust is so large here, I got to thinking that nowhere in the sampler is my maiden name. And I... I kind of looked around at the other blocks to see if there was somewhere that I could maybe squeeze it in. And I like all the blocks that, you know, the way that they are, and I don't really want to change anything. So I thought what I would do is, is I would put Limebach up here and I would put my dad's name down here, the date of their marriage, my mom's name down here and my brother's and my initials somewhere. Um, and then that way, my maiden name is on this piece. And, you know, I don't know. I just, I had thought about that kind of off and on as I was working on this piece. And it didn't really seem to go anywhere. And when I looked at my parents' block, I thought, you know, if there was ever a time to put my maiden name in, this is the block to do it. So here's my anniversaries all together. And I absolutely love, I've begun looking for frames and I believe the one I want is at Hobby Lobby. So once, um, 
the next time that I go into Salem, I'm going to take this piece with me and see about, you know, putting it with the frame and seeing if I like it. So, but I love, I love how it's coming together. I really, really do. And I'm so glad that I decided to, to start this piece. And I can't believe it's almost done. I just, I'm excited to have it done, but at the same time, I'm kind of, I don't know. I, I'm going to miss working on it, I know. And I've had so much fun researching my family history and just, I've learned so much in the past year about my family. And it's just, it's been such a fun journey. And I know, you know, as I go in life, I will, you know, I'll find other pieces to work on where, you know, I can incorporate you know, parts of my family and, and, but this piece is really special to me and I'm, I'm so excited that it's almost done. I can't wait to see it on my wall someday. I just, I'm, I'm just, I love it. I love everything about it. And yeah, I'm really, I'm excited and, and sad. So sort of like that bittersweet feeling. Um, but yeah, so there's my progress on that. And so hopefully the next time we meet, that particular block will be finished and I will be, um, you know, getting ready to start the bonus block, which is this one. Um, and I know this one's probably going to take a little bit of extra time. This is also the block where I'm going to try to fit um, Freddie in like I did for Molly. And I think, so I kind of looked at the calendar and I thought, when I finish block number 12, I'm gonna take a week off like I've been doing. It sort of gives me that nice little, um, gives me a little bit of a break, helps me kind of recharge a little bit. And then I will um, start the final bonus block and I will just push through until it's done. So that's kind of my plans um, because you know, this was my new year, new start. I started it on January 1st and my goal is to finish it by December 31st. And so this being November 25th, I've only got, you know, a month left. And uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I definitely want this one to be finished. Um, I want, you know, cause like I said earlier, I want to be able to start the new year sort of fresh. These are the colors that I'm using. So I'm using, um, these are all ones that I pulled out of my stash. I think the only one is that is the called for is Endive. And then I did use DMC for the rest. Um, this particular fob is um, Socks for Mom is where I, well, Becky sent it to me. Um, but I know that for a while there she had them for sale in her shop. Or, well, she was on Instagram and now I think that um, she reopened her Etsy shop. And I will put a link to her shop down below. Um, and if I forgot, which I don't remember, I because I paused the video, I am working on anniversaries is on 35 count sand. I think I might have already said that, but. So the next thing that I started working on was my morning stitch. I started working on it after I finished Pumpkin Hollow, and I showed that in my last video. I did try to find a frame for it when I went to Michael's that weekend, but I the problem was is it finished just a little bit bigger than a five by seven and so if i was to get a five by seven i would cut a lot of it off and if i got a bigger one it would just be too much open space so i've decided to just go ahead and finish it into a pillow and i'm hoping to maybe do that today um but as soon as i was finished working on that i started working on this so i finished this today this was a Thanksgiving freebie by Twin Peaks Primitive. I can't take credit for the idea of stitching it like, or this particular piece like this with the two turkeys, the pumpkin and Thanksgiving, because I saw that Christy from uh, Daisy Case Primitive, she had posted her little pillow where she had taken the freebie from Twin Peaks Primitive and she just stitched the top of it. So um, the way that it went um, above the two turkeys was a Quaker motif and then down below it was um, leaves and berries. And I loved how she did hers, and so I went ahead and started mine. I stitched it with DMC, which I will list down in the description box. 
This is a piece of 36 count linen that actually came from Baby It's Cold Outside. So I'm hoping to finish this into a pillow today and then that way my trench bowl, which is right there, won't look so lonely. And I'll get to enjoy it for a couple of days. So um, unfortunately I don't have a picture, but I will put a link to uh, their blog, I think is where I found it. I don't remember where I got it from. I don't remember, I don't think it was in their shop but I will track down the link where I got it from and I will make sure to put it down below as well as I will list the DMC that I used um, because um, there were some changes that I, I made, especially to the pumpkin. The pumpkin um, was supposed to be completely filled in and I went for more of the, is it the Quaker look where you, um, you know, like with the turkeys, it's, you can kind of see the, you can not necessarily see through it, but it's not like a solid piece. And so I decided not to stitch the, um, there were two different colors of orange and I decided not to stitch the other color. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> uh, next up is uh, my Victorian Father Christmas. This is Brian's stocking. This is out of the uh, Stony Creek Summer 2000 and I can't remember. 15, so it's summer 2015 issue of the Stony Creek Magazine. So originally, I wanted to be done with his stocking before now, but I am still going. And here is my progress. So I am down, as you can see, to the toe area. I don't have a long ways to go. A little ways, but not, not a long. I am nearing the end. I don't know that I'm gonna finish it before Christmas. I'm trying my best and I'm gonna still continue to, you know, uh, hack away at it until I'm done. I'm hoping that maybe this Sunday, um, I might be able to sit down and stitch on it for several hours. I did that a couple of weekends ago and that solid five hours of stitching, it really got me quite a ways. So I am going to try and sit down again on Sunday and see if I can't, um, you know, get a lot more of this completed. I, at this point, I really just want it to be done before Christmas. I mean, I would like it to be fully finished, but we'll see. I'm still going to keep going. I'm not going to quit. And I don't know why every time I, the last couple of videos that I have been doing have been on stormy days and there's a big black cloud going over the house again and so it looks like the room is dark behind me <sighs> anyway so back to the stocking I'm going to continue to you know try my best keep stitching on it keep going and try to get it done before Christmas um, if I don't if I'm not able to fully finish it at least I will have it done and then I can work on it next year and get it fully finished in time for Christmas. Um, so all I really have left to do is to finish the toe. I am, I was looking earlier today and I am, this is where I'm at is right up in here. So I just have to, and it, as you can tell, the toe just wraps right around. In fact, the one stitch where I'm at, it begins to make the descent down into the toe. So I've just got this big area here and then um, I think, I don't, there's a little bit of confetti stitching down in here, but not as much as was in here. So there's big chunks of color. So I should be able to get through it fairly quickly. And then I will do the back stitching and there's some beading, um, that you do. There's beading like all in the Ivy right in here. And then of course I have to stitch his name across the top, but I wanted to make sure and do that last. So I am stitching a Victorian Father Christmas on 28 count white Lugana with all of the called for everything. So anyway, going forward in the next two weeks, I will continue on, of course, with Brian Stocking. I'm going to stitch on my Anniversaries of the Heart. Um, Olga Stocking, I'll be working on her on Wednesday. Um, at some point next week, I probably will be able to stitch for a little while on Feast of Friendship. Just kind of depends on how long it takes me to get the anniversaries block done because that's, that's my priority. 
Um, I will have a new morning stitch, which will be Christmas related, and I will start that next week. And I'll just keep going. I'm just gonna keep, just keep stitching. Just keep stitching. Um, before I go, I do have a giveaway for this video. Um, so I, a couple of weeks ago, maybe it's been more like a month ago now, I attended the virtual Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit that was put on by Acorns and Threads. And um, they sent us a box that had our kits in it and we weren't allowed to open the box until the morning of the retreat. So um, the morning of the retreat, I opened up the box and I got a beautiful kit from Paulette Stewart of Plum Street Samplery, which it's in my mocking drawer of kits waiting for me to get to it. But then there was two kits that came from um, Heartstring Samplery. And originally what I decided to do, I knew that I wasn't going to stitch the chart for a while. And I thought what I would do is I would de-kit it. Um, and then at some other point down the road, I would uh, make a decision on what I wanted to do with the chart because it's not really my cup of tea. It's very beautiful, but it wasn't really my cup of tea. So I de-kitted it and then um, I put the chart in my stash. And the other day I was in my stash, I was looking for a chart and I came across it and I got to thinking about it and I realized that after I de-kitted it, it turns out I didn't need any of the threads that had come from that particular kit for any of the stuff I was kitting up. So I thought about it a little bit and I went ahead and I kitted it back up and I decided that I just needed to find a home for it because I know that I would, I'll never stitch it. It's very beautiful, but yeah, you know, there's just some things that you get and you just know. And I, when I saw this and I, uh, you know, it was very beautiful, but I knew when I looked at it that I would just never stitch it. So I went ahead and I kitted it back up and I decided that I would give it away in this video. So this is a called Until We Meet Again. And this particular chart is not available yet. Um, so this was exclusive to the retreat and it will be for, I'm guessing a year. I mean, that's, that seems to be the way those things usually work. It also came with a companion piece, which is also kitted. And so um, the threads that you use in this, you also use in this. So it comes with linen and then it comes with a little um, butterfly pin and the backing fabric to finish it into a little pillow. This one is called My Wish For You. So I decided I'm gonna give both of these away. Um, I'm gonna pull one winner and I will announce it in my next video. So if you are interested in winning these two kits for yourself, um, what I want you to do is in the comment section down below, I want you to tell me what your favorite Christmas dish to make is. Um, also, you must be a, um, sub or first, uh, so let's start this again. So once you answer the question, which is what is your favorite Christmas dish to make, you need to like the video, you need to make sure that you're a subscriber, and then in my next video, I will announce one winner and I will send it to that one person. And I just heard my husband get out of the car. And so I was a little bit flustered because I thought he was gonna come walking by right when I was in the middle of my giveaway spiel. <laughs> so I apologize if I kind of like flubbed there a little bit. Um, so let's try this again, just to like clear, you know, just to like make it absolutely clear. So what I want you to do is I want you to answer the question about what your favorite Christmas dish to make is. And then in my next video, I will announce one winner. So in order to be eligible to win, you must answer the question, you must like the video, and you must be a subscriber. Okay. So I think that is everything that I have to show and talk about in this video. Um, I do apologize if I seem to be a little bit Flustered. I knew I was going to do this video ahead of time and I felt very confident about it. But then, you know, I just kind of threw it together um, right after I had finished lunch and then the husband left. And then, yeah, anyway, <laughs> it doesn't matter. 
So I'm going to go through and edit this video anyway. So that being said, I of course will be back in two weeks, which puts me around the 12th of December. I want to thank you guys so much for stopping by today. Thank you for watching my last video, even though it came out several days late. I'm hoping that this video I will have an easier time of uploading and getting it onto YouTube and just, yeah, I hope it all works out. This is the last view that you will have of the pumpkins. The next time we meet, it'll all be for Christmas. <sighs> Can you believe it? I can't believe it's going to be Christmas. Anyway, so I hope you guys have a great couple of weeks. Don't forget to enter the giveaway question. 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 Don't forget to enter the giveaway question. If you're interested in seeing what I am up to during the two weeks between my videos, you can follow me on Instagram, I am Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, or you can follow my Facebook page, which is Pumpkin Hollow Quilting. If you have any questions, you can always leave them in the comment section down below. And I just realized that I never answered. I had gotten some questions in my last video and I just realized I never went and pulled those. So what I will do is in my next video, I will make sure to answer those questions and I am dearly sorry. So I hope you have a great two weeks and you get lots of stitching done and I will see you all again soon. Bye guys.